Today I'm going to be doing an ink tense demonstration of these clownfish with a teeny bit of colored pencil on top. For today's demonstration, I am working on Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper. This is the one that comes in the block. Currently, this is my favorite watercolor paper to use for ink tents, watercolor pencils, or anything where I'm going to be using water media, graphite tint, water soluble graphite. I'm definitely really, really liking the Arches paper. And for me, I like the hot press just because it's much smoother, so it's easier to get some of that fine detail. I do have some cold press I need to test out though. I'll have to do a comparison video soon. If you're supporters over on Patreon, I have the real-time version of this tutorial available for you now so make sure to head over and check that out if you are unfamiliar with patreon for as little as four dollars a month you can get access to each of my new one to two hour long tutorials that I upload every single week in addition to the already 150 or so I think there's more than 150 now available over there now if you want to see what videos I do have available I have a list to my video library below in the video description if you click that link you also will get instant access to my Margate and colored pencil you can get that two hour long two and a half our, I forget how long it is. It's long, but you can watch that demonstration over there for free now just so you get a feel for what Patreon is like. See if that's going to be a fit for you. Now let's move on to this demonstration. To start out for this, I used masking fluid to mask out the drawing I made of the clownfish on these. And now I am mixing water. Actually, I realized my palette for the ink tense blocks was a little bit dirty, so I'm, not, I'm just rinsing that out with some water. Now I'm adding water with a brush to the block themselves and just applying that straight to the paper. But notice how I don't just take the block and scribble on the paper. I find when you do that, you get a more rough kind of gritty looking texture. So there are times where that looks great, but for this, that is not what I wanted. So I mixed the, the ink mixture separately by just activating that block with water and then lifting it and painting it directly onto my paper. And I'm using a Taclon bristled filbert brush for this. You can use any, it doesn't have to be any name brand or anything like that. This one is a Royal Soft Grip, but really any of them should work fine for you. I quickly realized that green that I thought was gonna look great was a terrible idea. And so I'm gonna paint right over that with some of the purples. And I'm not letting it dry in between any of these layers. I'm doing all of this while it's wet and just letting it, the colors sort of run together, which gives you a very, very soft look. Now, once these dry completely, if you apply them the way that I'm doing here, once they dry completely, they are permanent. It is not going to lift like a watercolor would. That's the main difference between a watercolor pencil or watercolor um, pans to ink tents. Ink tents when dry is going to be completely permanent not going to lift on you. Now, if you apply it with the block or with the pencil to directly to the paper, you activate that with water. That can reactivate if you go over it with another layer later on because what happens is it's very common not to completely dissolve all of that pigment that you applied with a block or a pencil to the paper. But if it's applied like this separately with the paintbrush, that's not going to lift on you at all. Taking the hair dryer to this now and drying that. And I love that these dry really matte. I mean, you can put a gloss over them if you want a gloss varnish. You, I would use a spray, not a paint for that. But for me, I love that they dry matte because they photograph so well. So I'm using a cement, a rubber cement eraser here to lift off my masking fluid. Forgot the name of it there for a minute. And I don't. you don't have to rub this back and forth. I'm just sort of dabbing it to lift up sections. Now you can see that you the drawing that I did before, the graphite drawing for the clownfish, most of that is lifting up along with the masking fluid, but I can see enough that I don't have to redraw a whole lot there, but it is a lot lighter than it was when I put it on. Just again, dabbing and then pulling some of that off the rubber cement eraser as I work. Now, I should have waited to make sure that my ink tense was completely dry before I started lifting it. It was dry on the paper, but it was still a little bit wet on the masking fluid, and that's what you're seeing, why I've got these smudges on the clownfish. They would be completely clean, but when I was lifting it, I was smudging the wet areas from the masking fluid onto the clownfish themselves. Now, a tip, when you do use masking fluid, that is not intended to stay on your paper long term. That is something that you want on and off as quickly as possible. Don't leave it there for days, or you're going to be more likely to have problems with it ripping paper or causing different problems. And I've found that masking fluid doesn't play really nicely with all types of paper. If it's too soft, that can start to tear the paper. And of course, if you leave it on longer, that's going to make it more likely to tear the paper. 
but so far I've had really good luck with working on the Arches watercolor paper. This is the hot press watercolor paper and that seems to play really nicely with masking fluid. And this is the Winsor & Newton masking fluid that I'm using here. Now as I add the colors, I'm using a combination of orange, yellows. Now you can see I'm starting to pull some of that magenta in there. I wanted these clownfish to be super colorful. So I'm making sure to let these colors fade from the light into the dark. It almost has that sunset type of a feel to, to them at this, this stage. Now this brush, it's still a tack lumber silk. This one is a Simply Simmons brush and that one is just a round. Again, letting that fade from the yellow up into the orange. So I'm adding the light color first, then I will go on top with the darker color. And this is all still wet while I blend one area into another. Added some of the darker reds for the top section of that clownfish. Now as I'm blending, as long as it's still wet, I can add a little bit more water to my brush and get the colors to blend even more. But once that dries, those aren't going to smudge or move. So make sure, like I find that it works a little bit better if I work on a smaller section at a time, not like put down all the yellow and then all the orange on all three clownfish because the yellow will start to dry and then when I go on top with the next layer that I want to blend into it, the orange in this case, it won't really blend together quite as nicely. So working on one small area at a time works much better. If you're working in watercolor, you can react, well, depending on the watercolor uh, brand, they all behave a little bit differently, but sometimes you can reactivate that and get one color to blend into the next, and that's not going to be the case here with the ink tents. So that's why I'm going to work one smaller area at a time. But this also means I'm going to be able to glaze really, really nicely and get colors super bold and super dark by layering, and it won't reactivate the previous layers. So I'm using a light color. This is the magenta or purple color that I used earlier. Now, if I want this color to be lighter, I'm just gonna use more water. If I want it to be darker, I'm gonna mix a thicker ink mixture, much, much less water, and it'll be that same color, that same tone of purple can be super dark or super light, just based on how much water I'm adding. So this outside area of a lot of these fins, they're very translucent, so that's why I'm adding extra water for those. Now for the white stripes on these guys, they're not going to be completely white at all. They, they are mixed with purple quite a bit. And it almost looks like it's too dark, but in reality, I'm going to go back through and darken these a lot more once I add in all the darker areas of the fish. But you rarely want to leave white, straight white. It'll look too flat. White is very reflective. It's going to pick up a lot of the colors around it. And in this case, I've got this great purple background, so I'm gonna use those same colors in the white areas. It would be the same thing if I'm painting or drawing a white cat or a white dog or wolf. I'm going to pull colors from the background into their coat color. Very little actual white is going to be left. Unless you use a flash, a flash will overexpose that area and make it flat white. But then where I say flat white, that's a really good description because it's very, very flat. We want to create depth in here and make it look a bit more realistic. Well, says the person who wanted fish that are overly rain rainbowized. Is that a way to put it? Tons of colors. Sunsetized. I'm just going to keep making up terms here. But uh, I still do want it to have more depth, even if my colors aren't completely realistic. I don't want it to be flat. So it's really important here. You can see I'm coming right back through and darkening up those purples even more. And at this stage, it looks way too dark. It's kind of scary, but you can see on that finished painting, once I add the black and the deeper purples in, this is going to look a lot lighter in comparison. So now I'm coming back through with the black. This is still a round tack line bristle brush. You can use a liner brush if you're comfortable with that. Usually if I'm gonna use the liner brush with these, I go with a synthetic hog hair. So it's a little bit more stiff and that will give me finer lines. But in this case with the round brush, it's a bit thicker, but if I just apply a tiny, tiny amount of pressure to that brush, I'm able to get those fine details. So with that one brush, I can get thick lines or really tiny lines. You want to pay attention to whatever reference photos you have because some of these areas you're going to want to be smooth, the areas where you're adding the black. Some areas are going to be sort of rigid or bumpy looking. So just really watch your reference photo so that you can capture the different texture depending on what area you're working on. Now 
Now this layer of black, it's not as dark as I'm going to want. So I will go right back over it later on. But for my first layer, it'll work. But I want to let that dry in between layers because if I keep adding wet paint, wet paint on top of wet paint, it's just really not going to get the depth that I want there. So that's a pretty good base for what I'm going to use with the ink tense blocks. I may come back later with those, but for now I'm going to switch over to the ink tense pencils. These, these are the ones that come in the wood case. Such a nice case. It's really good if you're going to be traveling with them because they don't really spill out. They're locked in really well. Whereas if you had them in the tin, as much as I obviously like the tin because it's my artwork on it, um, it's easy to spill your pencils out of that. This wood case is really, really nice though. And this is the one that's made by Derwent. So now I'm taking blue. I'm just going to start shading this in here. I'm adding that blue. I'm also adding some purples over the black so that it's not just flat black. I'm using a darker plum magenta. I don't know what color this is. I don't read the names ever. So I'm going through and adding a lot of shading there using some of the darker orange colors. And then I add water. I just take a clean brush that has nothing but water on it and I can smudge those colors around. Now I find that adding the black ink tense pencil on top of an area will get much darker than making my ink mixture with the black ink tense block by itself. So that's why I'll, I will pretty much always, if I want something as bold as this with the dark black, that's where that black ink tense pencil over it is all, I'm, wow, can't talk. That's where that comes in. had a little bit of an area where the background, the tail, I had too much white on the tail, so I just added some of that dark purple and blended it up into the background to get rid of that, or kind of reshape that tail. I'm starting to separate these fish because right now they just all kind of blend into each other. So one of the ways that I'm going to help separate them is by really hyping up that contrast or the darks on the upper section of each of the fish. And if you look at, for example, the fish all the way to the left, see how the bottom por portion of his face is up against the dark of the fish behind it. And that pushes them apart. It separates them a, a bit. And then the fish in the middle, the dark on the top of his head is up against the light portion of the fish behind him. And that's going to help to separate it so I don't just have have to take like a black marker or something and outline everything which is not going to look good so this way just by controlling the contrast where are my lights where are my darks that can help me push one area in front of the other so that it doesn't just get lost into the other fish Now, I'm normally not pushing very hard with the ink tense pencils. You really don't need to unless I want something super dark and super harsh. For the most part, I'm using a pretty light hand with this. You don't have to have both the Inktense pencils and blocks, but they certainly are nice to work with together. It makes it much easier. I've done pieces just with the blocks. I've done some just with the pencils. It can be done either way, but you have to, to alter your techniques and using them in combination with each other definitely makes things go a lot faster, I find. Mainly because the blocks, I will use those for those big areas where I'm just painting in my bigger portions of the background and then I can use the pencil for the smaller detail. It's part of what lets this process or this medium go so quickly. So as I add this dark, I'm slightly pulling it out into the orange, but I'm not using black. It looks like it's a super dark color. It is, but purple. I'm putting the purple over the black and then pulling that into the orange. I don't want to just jump straight to black and pull that into the orange because I'm going to get a weird green kind of not a pretty color, which does not work for this piece. So I'm shading. I'm getting that black from the, the stripes on the fish to fade in by using purple. 
and then for the the darkest portions I can go in with the black but for the anything that's going to be touching the orange of the fish the purple is a better way to shade now I'm really starting to, to hype up that contrast Now it's more obvious that those shadows that I did in the white areas of the fish aren't really that dark. Now that I'm getting the darks in there, see how they look almost too light? I'm going to have to go back through on some of that and do a little bit more shading. But when it was up against the white of the paper or the other light colors, it, it just feels not like you're going too dark and it's very scary. But in reality, I was not dark enough. This is why normally when I paint or draw portraits, I will generally start with the hair first because that's usually on most people going to be one of the darker areas of the portrait. So it makes it easier for me to judge my values when I get into the skin tones. And that's basically what happened here. So I wanted to add a highlight. This I was just kind of experimenting with. And this stage, I didn't like how this looked, so I ended up working right over it. But I'm mixing white using the ink tense blocks and mixing their white with water and painting that over that. Now the white, it'll go on really translucent when it dries, it's super opaque, uh, which I knew, but I thought when I added the other color on top that it would look how I wanted, it didn't. I ended up doing a lot of shading with other colors and then I came back later with colored pencils to get the look that I wanted. But you can see I'm just basically trying to cover up what I just did with that white. So I, I would recommend st skipping that stage. Did not like. Now you've got to be careful because on some of this, you can see on the fish in the middle, I pulled a little bit too much purple on the bottom section of the yellow portion of the fish and it's starting to get muddy. Now I can fix that in a couple of ways. If I'm just using with ink, ink tense, I could add the ink tense block, um, make, make my ink mixture with the water and the white and paint over it and then repaint that section. Or in this case, I'm going to make that a lot more bold, a lot brighter by using colored pencils once all of this is dry but I really wasn't happy with the muddy look I was starting to get. And here I'm using a really light yellow, which is also very opaque and dries really light, but it, it gave an interesting look to the faces. That wasn't cute. Everything with art as you're painting, don't be afraid to experiment. I made some bad layers. I didn't ruin it. I just had to keep painting. It meant I needed more layers. Just keep painting until it looks right. But nothing was ruined here. I'm starting to pull the blue in and I think I've got a little bit of white mixed in there so that it's not it doesn't go too dark oh yeah there was definitely white see how it lightens up as it as it dries didn't like that either and it's funny how many stages of this I just wasn't thrilled with but I love how it ended up so like I said when you have those bad layers don't get frustrated don't throw it out figure out how to fix it because that's such an important thing in your art to really learn how to do learning to fix a mistake is one of the most valuable things as an artist you can learn much more so than just doing it right in the first place because as you're painting things in the future you may be working on a commission and something goes terribly wrong you need to know how to fix that you're not going to know how to fix those mistakes unless you were making mistakes earlier on so mistakes aren't a bad thing or in this case I wouldn't even call them mistakes they're just bad layers so move those blocks out of the way and look at the difference here I mean you can see the fish almost look like the finished one but it's, it's not great yet you want to keep messing with it keep working on it until it looks just how you wanted it to it's so easy to go eh, good enough I don't love it but good enough work on it till you love it So here I'm taking the black and really darkening up some of these stripes. Pulling some of the orange back in there, which really brightens that up. And this did help get rid of some of that muddy look that I was getting with the yellow on the fish, where I had mixed in too much purple. Now we're coming into some nicer colors. And see, I had to keep working on it. I had to keep layering it to get it to that stage. And it didn't take that much more work. But it was really worth putting in that extra effort. And 
this is the water brush derwent makes these oh, there are a few different brands that make them i definitely prefer the derwent ones but what it is is just it, there's water in the back end of the brush and you just lightly squeeze it and it comes out into the brush on the front now when i'm using it i don't just squeeze it let water come out onto those bristles and go straight onto the paper that will probably make a mess see how i keep dabbing it onto my paper towel below the easel and you don't have to use those. You can just use any paintbrush that you like to blend things out. These are just nice because I'm not, and the way my setup is, I have to reach kind of behind me to get to the water. So it's nice just to have these water brushes sitting right under me on my easel. It definitely saves some time. I was really determined to make this blue stand out and I wasn't loving it with the, like I just wasn't getting it. So I kept going right back over. Okay, I didn't like how it came with method number one. Let's see what happens if I do it this way. I didn't like how it worked when I added the white and then the blue on top of that. So I covered it. Let's try another way. So in this case with the blue pencil, that was standing out more, much more like what I was looking for. I knew in my head what I wanted these to look like and I had a reference photo to get the shape of the fish, but I was definitely not going by the colors in those reference photos. Adding some white gives me some nice highlights. And now the white with the pencil, this is going to be much, much softer. And this gave me more of the look that I was going for, for those highlights. It blended in a little bit with the purple that's on the fish. It didn't come out just straight white. If I want straight white or really, really opaque white, that's where I'm going to make the ink mixture with water and the ink tense block. But in this case, I just wanted a bit of a white highlight or a lighter highlight, I should say, not even white. But see how it blended in with the purple that was already there. The pencil will do that much better than, or give you a much more subtle highlight than the black lock well. So pulling out the highlights on the edges of the fins where the light would be catching. And there is my finished painting. I ended up going back over it a little bit and I don't have this on camera, but I took a little bit of color pencils with some orange and yellows on the bottom portions of the fish and I used my luminance for that. I found that the luminance worked better than most of the other pencils. The, the higher wax content pencil sticks better to the ink tents than any of the more oil-based pencils. I've tried the Pro Color, it really wasn't sticking well. I tried a few different things, but the luminance really stuck better and I just took the yellow and the orange and went on the underside of those fish and see how now they have a, a bit more of the glow that I was going for. With the ink tents, because I had added a little bit of purple to that, it darkened it up, it muddied it up just a bit or kind of neutralized it and I wanted this really fluorescent look. So using a wax-based pencil on top of that, and I've tried luminance, I've tried pr uh, Prismacolor, which is also wax-based, the luminance sticks better when I've gone on top of something like this or even when I've used markers on UFO paper, the luminance definitely stuck a lot better. You may not know, I'm kind of obsessed with orchids and I'm really excited because this one is already in spike, which is weirdly early for this time of year. It hasn't gotten cold enough that he should be in spike. Also, he has a burn on his leaf because he tried to play with light bulbs when he was hung on the other wall behind him. Turns out, orchid leaves and light bulbs do not mix. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, that'll help you to, to keep up to date with all of my new art videos every single week. You may want to also sign up for my email newsletter. It's free. I send out one email once a week, updating you with whatever new videos went out, some art motivation, and updating you with when that live stream that week is going to be, which is almost always Wednesdays.